The circuit in question is drawn below and as we have already seen we can imagine the motor as rep being represented by a battery representing our back EMF. Notice how it's opposing the original voltage and an internal resistance which is just the windings of the motor itself. Our given information is as follows. The voltage across the entire motor was 12 volts and the stop current when he actually seized up the motor was 1 amp. So let's start with that information to see if we can figure out what the resistance in the windings is. When the motor is stopped, our back voltage is actually zero. Remember the motor has to be running at some sort of speed to generate a back EMF. So we can assume V back is zero in this case, which simply means our net voltage is the full 12 volts. So all we have to do is plug it into Ohm's law and figure out what R is. Let's solve for the resistance of the windings. R is V over I. In the first situation where the back EMF does not exist because the motor has been stopped, we simply get 12 volts over 1 amp, as that's the current flowing through the windings at the stopped state. So R is simply going to be 12 ohms. And that value is not going to change. It's the resistance of the windings. We're not changing the properties of the windings at all in this question. Now the goal of the question is to figure out what the back EMF is. What is the voltage generated by the motor when it's running at full speed? We know the current. The current when it's running at full speed is 0.24 amps. All we have to do is figure out V back. Keep in mind we also know now that the resistance is 12 ohms and that does not change. So again, if we use Ohm's law, we can figure out what our net voltage must be to generate 0.24 amps of current. So using Ohm's law, we simply get V is equal to IR. Our current is 0.24 amps, our resistance is 12, and when I multiply those two together, I should get V net. Let's do that. 0.24 times 12 gives us 2.88 volts. We know our net voltage consists of two voltages added together. The original voltage will assume is positive as it's going with the current and our back voltage will assume is negative. These two things will add together to create 2.88 volts. Let's zoom out a little so we have some room. We see our equation as 2.88 volts is 12 minus V back. All that's left is to solve for V back. So our back voltage will simply be 12 minus 2.88. And if we work that out, we will get our answer. of 9.12 volts.